Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Darius Manns, President and CEO of Africare. Africare is the oldest and largest international non-governmental organization working exclusively in Africa. Darius has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Darius, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to come talk about Africare and Africa. It's so noteworthy that Africa is the only continent that is treated like a country. Talk about Africare and how Africare meets the needs and addresses some of the issues that the diverse countries of Africa, the diverse people of Africa face in today's modern world. Absolutely right. Africa is a very big place. Uh, if you were to add together the national income of all of the countries in Africa, it would be number five in the world, about the size of Germany. But it is 54 countries with very diverse circumstances and needs. Africa started in 1970 in response to the drought in West Africa across the Sahel. And since 1970, we worked first in the Sahel and then across Sub-Saharan Africa and some countries in North Africa too. We mobilized about a billion dollars uh, across 36 countries to focus on basic needs of saving lives and creating economic opportunities for people in Africa to lift themselves out of poverty. And in those days when the drought had occurred, the major issue were uh, food. The major issue was, was the impact of drought on, on communities. Not only are those impacts still felt today, but today we are dealing with such crises as the AIDS crisis across Africa. Absolutely. We're dealing with uh, international cross-border tensions that have seemed to only escalate. We're dealing with uh, sometimes ethnic tensions. Talk about how you think about serving Africa and, and so many of these different needs. In 1970 when we started, Africare was one of the few organizations doing this work on the ground. And since that time, we've seen enormous change across the continent, though some still pressing challenges like food security. Our experience is that Africa can feed itself and, in fact, can help feed the world. But the challenge is to address the problems on the ground of enabling small farmers to be able to increase their productivity, get their goods to market, to get especially young people interested in agriculture again. Because uh, what you see across the continent, unfortunately, is low agricultural productivity. Small farmers that are unable to get to market their commodities but I think the good news is precisely because of technology, the power of information on a mobile phone for farmers to have access to where the best, what's a fair price for my product? Where are the best markets for me to sell to? Uh, I've just come back from India, to give you an example, uh, which has had phenomenal success in agriculture the, because of the Green Revolution. Right. There, like we're starting to see in Africa, the mobile phone is enabling farmers to also get access to information about extension, better ways to grow what they produce, and to connect them to finance uh, and also markets to sell into. And so that's the path that Africa is on in agriculture. Much work to be done, but that's the work that Africa does in communities across the continent. But we also look at agriculture together with health and with nutrition. Uh, HIV AIDS, as you quite rightly point out, big challenge, especially in Southern Africa. Uh, but the work that we have been doing since the 1990s around HIV AIDS shows that a great deal can be done to prevent uh, HIV AIDS, to do a very cost-effective job of treating uh, and managing that disease burden. Let me just give you an example in South Africa which is in the eye of the storm of the global AIDS pandemic. We have been working with 370 health facilities in the Eastern Cape, where Nelson Mandela was born and laid to rest, to help them fight the challenge of HIV AIDS. I'm happy to say that we just celebrated a year of zero cases of mother to child transmission of the AIDS virus. Zero cases. Zero. Zero. That's phenomenal. Yes. What a phenomenal change. What a phenomenal change. 
Talk about how you engage local communities and local knowledge holders in the development of solutions that are appropriate to the communities themselves. That is the hallmark of AfriCare's approach. 97% of our staff are Africans. They know how to marry respect for local traditions and culture with behavior change. How do you introduce the new in a culturally appropriate way? And so let me give you the example uh, again in South Africa using the mobile platform. Uh, using the cell phone, we are able to do a good job of following up uh, with AIDS patients to help ensure that they adhere to treatment. Very important that you be disciplined about it. And we do it in some creative ways, for example, um, making sure that when it's time for you to be reminded of taking your medications, you not only get a text message, but you get messages from friends and family in your circle. You have to do this for us. And so trying to find ways using modern technology, but also making sure the work that we do is embedded within communities, that they are part of the solution, is what AfriCare is always uh, used as the fundamental starting point, because that's what ensures not just impact, but sustainability. So we start by mobilizing communities around a problem that they see as important. They are very much a part of the solution to implementing uh, the approaches that AfriCare supports because we want to be sure that we work ourselves out of a job. From day one, we have an exit strategy. How do we have an impact that's going to carry on long after AfriCare is gone? What other health programs do you get involved in? Uh, we work very much on the communicable diseases. Our focus is on strengthening health systems at the local level to be able to handle these disease burdens. So in, um, in July, uh, next month, uh, we will help the government of Benin achieve universal coverage of long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets for malaria control. We're in 3,000 villages working with community groups across the country uh, to make this very big push. We distributed almost 3 million bed nets last year. Next month, we'll distribute another more than 5 million to get to universal coverage. Um, as another example, um, we are on track in Angola, working under the leadership of the Ministry of Health and working with the private sector to eradicate polio. Uh, we expect by um, July, August, Angola will have three consecutive years of zero cases of polio. And that's by working at the community level, a data-driven approach again, the mobile phone being extremely important, and going door to door on immunization and public health campaigns to eradicate polio. And beyond the health issues, you provide so many other different uh, services uh, that, that are all designed to in some way strengthen civic society. Let's talk about the, others, the other areas of focus that you have. Um, agriculture is a big focus for AfriCare. We have worked, um, all of our focus is on small farmers. And particularly sustainable uh, uh, products. Absolutely. Products that can get to market, Absolutely. that do not require a huge amount of water, right. uh, and, that, and that impact the environment in positive ways as opposed to negative ways. Let me give you an example. In the north of Mali, we have been helping to green the desert north of Timbuktu. Uh, it's an interesting pro project around growing more rice using less water mm -hmm. and less chemicals. That we worked with the support of the Rockefeller uh, Foundation um, and it has been incredibly successful. Not just in helping those communities but in it being replicated by other communities and I will tell you when the conflict broke out in the north of Mali um, many, all of our assets were stripped, our staff had to go underground, right. communities were under siege, uh, and uh, the good news is now um, many of those communities continue to grow and became part of the solution uh, to uh, provide food up in the north of conflict 
during the north of Mali during the conflict and since. And the sophistication of connecting each of these elements, technology, workforce development, feedback loop, evaluation of, of, of uh, pilot projects, once you pilot to be able to generously distribute that knowledge and, 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 um, and ensure that it gets disseminated, all these different elements, it, it connects back to any, any organization or, or a group of people that want to deal with a multifaceted problem. You really need to deal with these problems as a whole. Africare seems to take a very holistic view and a very multidimensional, very connected view of, uh, of how you approach your work. And, and you have to. Uh, people don't live their lives in silos, health or water or agriculture. Um, so the hallmark of Africare's approach from 1970 is finding, um, taking an integrated approach to addressing uh, some of the big challenges that communities face, addressing the problems that they identify as priorities. Uh, and so in all of our programs, you will see, I mentioned um, our agriculture project. Water will be a part of it. Uh, nutrition will be a part of it health will be a part of it, taking an integrated approach. Education to will be a part to of it. addressing these challenges. Talk about your programs in urban areas. Africare's focus has always been uh, rural Africa. We go where the road ends. That's been our focus, where the need is greatest. Uh, but we have also done work in peri-urban areas around helping uh, to increase food production um, as these cities are teeming with people uh, and struggling to cope. And also the connecting the rural areas into the markets where right. the consumers are living. Hugely important, big part of the work that we do. As I mentioned, I just come from India where I was inspired by something that uh, a government official said to me. Uh, India, as you may know, in the 1960s imported virtually all its wheat. Right heavily dependent on food aid uh, from the United States, PL 480, food aid. Uh, today, they produce twice the wheat of the United States. Now they got a different problem. How do you get farmers to grow things other than wheat? wheat. Right. Um, and I think the lesson I drew from their experience is one, the power of information being able to provide small farmers information about prices, about markets, uh, and connecting them to markets. But second is the power of choice. This Indian official said to me, their aim in just a few years' time is to be sure that 50% of their farmers have five markets to be able to sell into. That's extraordinary. In Africa, unfortunately, small farmers too many times maybe have a choice of one? Have a choice of one, and, and if all the farmers are growing the same crop, then the price plummets, and all of a sudden, your investment is not returned. Right. It can become disastrous. So that's where the connection between the communication, the, infra the road Absolutely. infrastructure, Absolutely. the urban areas, and the rural areas is so important. And so I, I see in a number of countries where heavy investments are being made to physically connect farmers to markets, Ethiopia is making major investments in building rural roads. Um, in addition, you know, we see in countries uh, moving toward creating commodity exchanges so that there's an auction market to sell into. Uh, increasingly, I think um, the focus is on storage so that farmers don't have to immediately sell. Uh, gives them an opportunity right. to wait for the market to improve and for others to take that risk. The way you work with, with your partners is really looking at how do you create a system that is sustainable, that is empowered from within, and that ends up with a transformation at a very, very personal level for individuals who need to grow, need to consume, need to communicate, need to raise children in a way that, that doesn't result in, a, in the next drought causing another massive humanitarian crisis. 
Uh, can I take the example of Ethiopia? Uh, we all remember live aid. Yes. I think those days are over in Ethiopia uh, because Ethiopia has invested so heavily in uh, promoting uh, agriculture through extension services, through rural roads, and, and uh, you know, I, I see across the continent this change in the thinking about agriculture from agriculture being a neglected sector, sometimes heavily taxed, um, to thinking about Afri uh, agriculture as being a business, an yes. opportunity for growth uh, that's absolutely front and center of the development agenda. That's a big change. What's next for Africa? For us as an organization, we're doing I think three very important things. One is uh, doubling down on technology in all of our businesses. How do we marry what we do so well, behavior change, with new technologies so that we can have a greater impact uh, and increase the scale? We're doing that in agriculture, we're doing it in health, we're doing it in water. Um, in, um, give you an example in health. Uh, malaria. Uh, very often when someone presents with symptoms that look like malaria, they're immediately treated for malaria, when that may not be the problem at all. So working with a technology partner, a cotton swab uh, can tell you within seconds with uh, more than 95% accuracy, is this in fact malaria? So they are treated properly. But second for us is partnerships. You know, we cannot do this by ourselves. Um, we need to partner with those who complement us and can help us provide those integrated solutions. Uh, so we're doing it again in agriculture and water and health. These are the areas where we focus. Um, we're doing something very interesting with the National Basketball Association. Oh, that's interesting. I'll give you an example. Tell us about that. Uh, in uh, Nigeria to start, where we're partnering with uh, the National Basketball Association with ExxonMobil, which is heavily invested in Nigeria, uh, to engage young people, use the platform of sports to give young people skills for life, skills for work, the power of celebrity, which captures the imagination of young people. And Nigeria is kind of crazy for basketball. Absolutely. And um, Hakim Olajuwon, uh, the greatest basketball player Nigeria has ever produced, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, a real legend, a giant of a man, not just very, very tall, but his, what he represents, what he is committed to very successful businessman, retired 10 years ago, still training a number of, of today's basketball stars. Uh, he is the NBA's ambassador for Africa. He was with us for the launch of this partnership in Nigeria uh, last year. And you know, with him, uh, with Swin Cash, if you've ever heard of her, WNBA superstar. Right, right. Um, uh, what uh, these two basketball giants uh, have done is spoken to young people about the opportunity that sports provided to them. As Swin Cash uh, said it, uh, basketball gave her a tremendous opportunity, a basketball and a book, and that has changed her life. Uh, for her to rise out of poverty uh, and be able to bring so many people along with her. Uh, and I, I have to tell you, I wish you could have seen the impact of, of her example, Hakim Olajuwon talking to young people, uh, and now with this program, um, which is called Power Forward, uh, that we're implementing first in Nigeria, um, we're seeing the effect that it's having on uh, school attendance or an academic success, these young people becoming leaders in their communities. Drawing attention to the power of education, the power of, of believing in a future that you can actually shape. That belief is so powerful and having those types of 
role models who are walking the talk, who are living that dream, but not in a fake way and not, and not suggesting that everyone is going to end up being seven foot right. uh, uh, tall and, and, and have the, the, the physical capabilities, but the intellectual capabilities are certainly accessible and the determination is certainly accessible. And the idea of transforming oneself and, and one's communities is certainly available to, to each of us. The work that you're doing is so amazing. The work that your colleagues throughout the world and throughout Africa are doing is doing is so amazing. Darius Mans, thank you so much for sharing the work of Africa, and thank you so much for your insight. Thank you very much.